Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 70. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 7, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet SE and correction factor. SE stands for the standard error. Now, standard error is going to be sigma sub x bar. That's the standard deviation for our sampling distribution of x bar. Now, when you have sigma, you can simply take sigma and divide by the square root of n, and that will give us our standard error. Now, sigma is population. That means the spread in the population. Remember, standard deviation tells us the spread or how fairly our mean represents all its data points. Sigma, however, think about it. That's from the population. That means you have all the values, including the extreme low and high ones. When you go and you plot all the x bars, like we did the last couple of videos, we're talking about plotting averages. Those are all the values. The averages are the uh, values in the middle. So there's just not as much spread. So when you get standard deviation um, sigma sub x bar, standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar or standard error, it's better be a lot smaller. And the way we do that is we divide sigma when we know it by the square root of n. Now next chapter we'll see what to do when we don't have standard deviation from the population. But what's this? This is the, called the correction factor. And the way it works is when our, we'll always compare sample size to population size. That means how big is the sample size compared to the population. Anytime it is very small, then we don't need this correction factor. In fact, we'll have a hurdle. Anytime our calculation of little n divided by big N is greater than 5%, then we use it. Now, the deal is, is most of the time, the population size is very large and the sample size is very small. So most of the time, you don't need this. And the book assumes for most problems that you don't need this. Ah, but I want to show you why you don't need it in this example here. So we have population standard deviation, sample size, and then we're going to vary our population size. Let's go ahead and calculate little n, sample size 50. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, divided by this. Now, I'm, this one is a giant, the biggest number that Excel could see. So we'll, we'll take it like it's near infinite. All right, but we're going to, the denominator for each one of these calculations would be different. That's the n, the big n uh, population size. All right, now that's scientific notation. I'm going to go up to home. Notice it's a scientific in general. Or I could have control shift tilde to wipe away all the formatting. All right, so very, very small, very, very small, 0 0.01. And finally, we get one that's above 5%. That's 10%. Let's just do a little formula. Equals this is uh, greater than 0 0.05. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Notice it actually put the 0 in right there, but you don't have to type that in. So this is just a column that says true when, oh, we have to use the correction factor. Now let's calculate. Independently of the formula, let's just calculate this part and see what it looks like. Right? My guess is, would be if it's very small like this, then this thing better be very close to 1, which means, of course, you wouldn't need it. All right, let's calculate this. It's square root. And we have two subtractions, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. So we have to use parentheses to do the subtraction first. So big N minus little n, sample size, F4, close parentheses, divided by and then big N minus 1. Close parentheses, close parentheses. Control Enter, double click and send it down. So the um, when we have a very small little n divided by big N right here, you could see these values are very close to 1. And that's why they just leave it off when the sample size is small compared to the population. Now let's go ahead and calculate the standard error. That's going to be our population standard deviation, sigma. And I'm going to hit the F4 key, divided by the square root of our n, F4. And it will be the same for all of them. But now, let's multiply these. And we're going to see that for these ones where n is very small, there's basically not much difference at all. So this is breaking apart this formula, there, 
there, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. This is there, and this is there. All right, control enter, double click, and send it down. So you could see for these ones where the population size is very small, we get almost near ones here. Here's the standard error, and here's the standard error with the correction factor. So you can see why we just don't need it. But this one, look, this one's 0.1. Right, so we have 0.94 here, so when we multiply these, it knocks it down uh, a bit. All right, uh, so that's just a little bit about the relationship between the standard error and the correction factor. When we come back in our next video, we'll look at how changing sample size changes the probability of any uh, statement we make about x bar. All right, see you next video.